What are the steps required to adding Hystrix to a Spring Boot microservice and implementing fault tolerance? First step is to add the Maven dependency. This should come as no surprise to you because most of these libraries are, you know, they have bundled Netflix dependencies, sorry, bundled Spring Cloud dependencies. So in order to get Hystrix, you add Spring Cloud Starter Netflix Hystrix dependency. And I've told you, the Spring Cloud folks love long names, and this is another example of that. All right, so this is the first step. Second step, once you've added the dependencies, once you had the, the, the Hystrix goodness, the Hystrix libraries in your class path, the next step is to add an annotation to your application class. So whatever application needs Circuit Breaker, you go to the application class, the main application class in that project, and then you add this one annotation called enable circuit breaker, all right? So you add that to the main application class where you added the Eureka thing, right? It's kind of similar. You add the enable circuit breaker, and now your application has Hystrix enabled. So Hystrix is there, but it's not doing anything. It's just sitting there waiting for you to give it instructions, all right? So that's the next step. You add Hystrix command to methods that need circuit breaking, all right? So let's say you have a method that makes an external call. That method needs a circuit breaker because that external call could time out and that could result in threads being queued up and that could result in the whole application going down. So you identify those methods and then you add this annotation on top of it. You say hystrix command and then that particular method is now ready to break the circuit when things go wrong. Now, how does it know when things go wrong? That's the final step. You configure the Hystrix behavior. You provide the parameters. Those are the parameters that we um, that we talked about earlier, and there are a couple more that we're gonna be looking at. So you tell Hystrix, this is the method that needs the circuit, that could potentially break the circuit, and then this is these are the parameters that you need to be thinking of when the circuit needs to be broken. And when these parameters are aligned, you need to break the circuit. All right. So this is the, uh, this is the uh, microservice that needs to break the circuit, right? It's a movie catalog service. This is making multiple calls. And so this needs to effectively break the circuit when one of these calls fails. So this is where we're gonna be adding the circuit breaker. I'm going to run through the example of what it takes to write that in the code in the movie catalog service. All right, so let's look at those steps. Step one is to add the Maven dependency to the form.xml. Should be fairly simple. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to go to IntelliJ. I'm going to switch to projects view so that I can see my form.xml. Here's the movie catalog service, form.xml. Here is where I have some of my existing dependencies. So let me add this here, just about testing. I'm going to add this Spring Cloud Starter Netflix Hystrix dependency. I'm going to save and um, let Maven do its thing, get the libraries into the class path. And now we have Hystrix in our class path. So that's step one. All right. Step two, enable the circuit breaker uh, in the application class. So it's basically one annotation that you add to the application class to just enable circuit breaking, right? So how do I do that? I'm gonna find the application class. I'm gonna switch to the, the packages view, which is uh, handy, the packages, and then open the application class in the movie catalog. Here, I'm gonna add this other annotation, import it should be from um, here, this package, right? I have enabled circuit breaker. And now with that annotation, this application now has Hystrix enabled, but then it doesn't know what to do. It says, okay, I've got circuit breaker, but I have no idea of what calls I need to use for circuit breaking. I have no idea when the circuit needs to break. That's where you have the third step, all right? Adding Hystrix command to the methods that need circuit breaking and also the fourth step that goes along with it, configuring it, right? So this is where things get a little more trickier. So let's examine that. So I'm gonna to go to the resources class, the catalog resource. 
this is the one that's um, in the movie catalog service, right? So this is the one that's making multiple calls. This is um, this method here, the get catalog method. This is making a call to one service to get one information. It's a rating data service to get one piece of information, rating information, and then it's making a call to the movie info service to get the movie information. So this is a possible contender for a hysteric circuit breaker. So I'm gonna add this annotation here, at hysterics command and import the class, all right? So now I'm saying, hey, Hystrix, mark this as something that needs to break. So here's the package that I've imported, all right? So I'm telling Hystrix, this is a method which should not cause the whole thing to go down, right? I want this to break the circuit when something goes down, all right? So that's uh, the final step, step four, configuring Hystrix behavior. So there are a bunch of things that we can do, like we talked about, we've looked at a bunch of parameters that you can set. But the first thing I'm gonna approach is to leave everything be the default and uh, look at just the fallback mechanism. Right? We talked about the fallback mechanism, what happens when a circuit breaks. So I'm gonna leave everything as a default. Whatever causes Hystrix to break the circuit by default, I'm gonna let it do its thing. And then I'm gonna configure what it needs to do when the circuit breaks. I'm gonna go reverse, right? I'm gonna do the fallback mechanism first and then tackle the other things later because it's a little more easier to understand this way, right? So I'm gonna configure Hystrix here by adding the fallback mechanism. So how do I add the fallback mechanism? So if I look at the parameters to the Hystrix command, it takes in a bunch of arguments. The one argument is fallback method. Well, guess what that does? It takes in a string, which is the name of the method, all right? It's the name of the fallback method. So I'm gonna call this get fallback catalog, all right? So what this is doing is this is get catalog. I'm gonna create get fallback catalog. So what this is doing is I'm telling Hystrix, this is the method that should not cross a particular limit, right? Which are the parameters. When that limit is crossed and when you need to break the circuit, I have this other method over here called get fallback catalog, just call that, right? So this is the fallback when the circuit breaks. Don't call this method, call this other method, all right? So obviously that other method needs to have the same method signature as this method that I'm annotating. So I'm gonna copy this method signature and um, I'm gonna create that over here, all right? So I have um, a get fallback catalog method, which is um, has the same method signature, but it returns a hard-coded list of catalog items, right? It says array store as list, new catalog item, and uh, it's basically returning uh, the movie name, which is no movie, description is empty, and then the movie rating is zero, all right? So it's a fallback, it's hard-coded values. Again, remember, you don't want to be doing a whole lot in the fallback on the fallback method, right? You don't want to be making another call because in that case, the fallback method could fail and the fallback needs another fallback. And no, you don't want to do that. So the fallback method needs to be simple, hard-coded uh, responses, or like I said, the the most you want to do is pick something from the cache. That's, that's about it, right? You want to keep things simple for the fallback. You want to reduce the possibility of an error when a fallback method executes. All right, so now that we've done this, restart the server, and uh, now I'm going to kill the movie info service. All right, so I'm killing one of the dependencies. Now, if I refresh, you notice here, I get the fallback method. So what Hystrix is doing is, it's using the fallback method when it detects that a service is down, right? That's part of the default behavior. We could do timeouts here, but it's a little trickier to simulate timeouts on a local machine. I'm gonna have to add an artificial timeout and I'm too lazy to do that, but feel free to do that if you will. You will see some similar behavior. Once you hit the default configuration for Hystrix, it's gonna call the, the fallback method. But what I'm doing here is just bringing the service down, right? I brought movie in for service down, which is one of the two methods that it needs to call. So when the service is down, you get the fallback method executed. That's the response that goes through and that's what you see over here.